So I have got to challenge her multiple of times within the last two years. And now even in season 9, I started playing on a unranked account and it only took me a bit more than a week to get back to Grandmaster. So in this video today, I'm giving you guys all the things that I have learned climbing from Silver to Challenger and I will also be giving out tips. But before we continue, a lot of people have been messaging me that they have been on a losing streak and they always ask how do I start winning. I always say go to ProGuides.com which has the best videos on getting better at League. They have courses with pro players, they have champion tier list and matchup stat tools, and they have 24-7 challenger coach who you can talk to anytime. And they really work at getting you to a higher division. It's got everything you need to get better at League all in one place. I highly recommend it, check out the link in the description below. So the most majority of the people that watch my stream and my content, they know that I play on like 5 different accounts at the same time. All of the accounts are currently sitting in high diamond up to grandmaster with a very high win rate. So I have had to go through a lot of games where I play against silver players, against gold players, against platinum players and even so much more. So I pretty much know how every Edo works and I know what you have to do in order to carry them. So I'm gonna break this video video down into each elo tier and I'll be talking about what I have learned playing all of those games in that elo and I will also be talking about what you have to do in order to carry them. So the first elo that we are going to begin with is the silver elo. So after playing plenty of games in silver I have already noticed a lot of things. People that play in silver play way too many champions and they have very little understanding about their champion. They often have very little mechanics up to no mechanics at all and they have very little knowledge about their limits with the champion. So if you want to climb from silver to gold or even higher, you want to make sure that you limit your champion pool to only one or two champions. If you don't get to play your champion, you just want to dodge and you want to try again. Losing 3 LP is pretty much nothing so dodging is no problem at all if you don't get your champion. The second thing that I have noticed from playing all of those games in silver is that people don't really understand how to close out games. Some of the games that are being played in silver are sometimes taking up to 40 minutes or even longer. So one way to fix this once and for all is simply by watching other streamers that play your champion. You want to study how they play that champion and you want to go into how they actually make their decisions and you want to go and copy their playstyle and make it your own. Do not just watch the stream just pure for the plays but try to actually understand why he plays that ward there or why he goes to farm the jungle camps or why he goes bottom or stuff like that. Watching a streamer is one of the best things that you can do to get better. You can watch the decisions that are being made live on stream. You can see the plays that are being made that you thought was never possible. So take that chance and use the streams to your advantage. The next elo that we are going over about is gold. So most of the accounts that I have created and started ranked with, most of the accounts has started in gold elo. And one of the things that I have learned from gold players is that they still are not very good at the game. They are better than silver players. Some of the gold players even have very decent mechanics with the champion but one big problem about the gold players is that once again just like the silver players their decision making is very bad the games are being closed out much faster than the silver games by no doubt but the thing is that people still have no understanding of what they are doing in the game if you want to push yourself out of gold elo you want to start to understand the actual laning phase when i played in gold elo i have never seen anybody manipulate the creep waves. Nobody understood when to ward or where the warding locations are. Nobody understood what the power spikes are of their champion or when to roam or what to do when your TP is up. It is so easy for me to win games in gold elo because people make so many mistakes in the game it's actually ridiculous. You might not understand it yourself right now because at the moment you are being a gold player but if you happen to become a diamond player within the future you will understand me. Too many mistakes are being made within the laning phase but even outside of the laning phase people still don't understand on what to do. Even though the games might be closed out much faster than the silver games people have still very a little understanding of what they are supposed to do when they play their role. So just like the silver 
silver players, make sure you watch a lot of streamers and try to understand the decisions that they make. Also, besides the decision making, you still want to try to see if you can improve based on mechanics with the champion. And for the last thing, you want to focus on getting better at the laning phase because in silver, it doesn't really matter because people don't really understand anything about the game. But if you want to push yourself to platinum or diamond or even higher, you want to start to understand the actual laning phase. So the next tier that we are going to be talking about is the platinum tier. So one of the things that I have learned from playing a bunch of games in platinum tier is to turn off your whole entire chat. Like literally just drag your whole chat out of the screen because people in platinum tier are so toxic at the game. If you find yourself in platinum tier right now, just focus on your own gameplay and don't talk to your teammates at all. It's very normal for people to go AFK in your game because people are afraid that they never get diamond. So some of the players in platinum tier right now, some of them have very good mechanics with their champion. At this point, you want to have mass mastered your own champion already and the only thing that you want to do is focus on your own gameplay and your own decisions. People in Platinum are starting to understand on how the game works and the games are finishing much faster than Silver and Gold, but people still haven't perfectionized the decisions that they make in the game. The same applies for the laning phase, the people have very good mechanics but their laning phase is not perfectionized. At this point, you don't just want to look into improving the decision making as well as the laning phase, but you want to try to learn and understand on how to see mistakes. The difference between a platinum player and a diamond player is that the diamond players can see the mistakes which the platinum players don't see. For example, if you put me into a gold game, I can exactly see all the mistakes that the people are making. Since I can see all of the mistakes that are being made, I can easily snowball in the game. So not only do I have very good decision making as well as understanding of the laning phase, but I play based on the mistakes that the people make. Based on those little things, I can snowball very easy in the game. And this allows me to get a very high win rate in gold elo as well as in platinum and diamond. You cannot really learn this from streams at all, the only way to learn and understand understand and see the mistakes is simply by playing your own games and play a lot. This is why most of the people that become platinum are not able to become a diamond player. Now for the final tier that we are going to be talking about, we are going to combine diamond with master, grandmaster and challenger. So if you find yourself in diamond elo right now, you have probably got to understand that master tier and above is just way different of skill. Most of the people will find themselves completely stuck in diamond and they don't ever seem to go up at all. So it is no doubt that the master tier players and the buff are just way better than the diamond players are. But that doesn't mean that it's impossible to get master. So most of the people that have got to diamond only play a few champions. They've got very good with the mechanics of their champions and some of them are even mechanically better than a challenger player. But now what exactly makes a difference between a diamond player and a master tier or above. So the master tier players and above, they often have very good knowledge of the game and they know exactly what they are doing. They know exactly how to position their champion properly and they understand the laning phase very well and they know exactly how to take care of the mistakes that the enemy team makes. But this is not simply what makes them a master tier player or challenger player. When taking a look at the list of the the challenger players, most majority of the people that are in that list are not one tricks at all. When taking a look at the players, they play a lot of different champions at the same time. No matter what champion they pick, they are still able to perform very well. This is what allows them to counter pick all of the people that are one or two tricking a champion. Now when taking a look at the diamond players, the most majority that have got to diamond are one tricks. The master tier players or above are all easily able to counter pick the one tricks. Also outside of picking champions their decision making is still just much better in general. This is what makes the difference between a diamond player and a master tier up to challenger. Now of course that doesn't mean that you have to stop being a one trick and to start playing all of the champions. You can technically still play only one champion and still get to the challenger tier. 
The thing is that you gotta start playing a champion that can actually get you to the challenger tier. So don't just start one tricking a champion like Singe, but actually go and one trick champions like Riven. Regardless of the game that you are playing, Riven is always a champion that works in every single gameplay. No matter which team comp you have, it works. There's plenty of other Riven mains which has already got to the challenger tier. So if you find yourself in a situation where you are a Riven main, then all you gotta do is try to improve in the game and focus on your own gameplay. Once again, decision making does it all. League of Legends is not a game like a shooter game. It's all about thinking and doing what you have to do. And if you only make perfect decisions, then you should be able to get wherever you want to be. So just take that advice and try to climb some more. Don't be afraid to be stuck in whatever elo you are in. Just focus on improve and that's literally the only thing that you want to do. Anyway, this was it for the video guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you are looking to watch a high elo Riven main, make sure you check out my stream. I'm streaming a lot so go and check me out. Also if you are looking for a nice and friendly discord community, don't forget to join my discord server. And I guess I'll see you guys in my next video man. Peace.